issues. So with the release of It Chapter 2, I decided to review a few clown horror movies, or horror comedies, I should say, or just comedies, like Stitches. I did drive through last year, and now we're doing Stitches. You'll be needing Stitches. No, not that song. This isn't a Shawn Mendes movie. Stitches is a 2012 horror comedy about Stitches the Clown, who accidentally gets killed by a group of brats that he was trying to entertain, and six years later, he exacts his revenge by doing a few more party tricks that he didn't get to finish that one day because clowns can never rest in peace unless they complete their birthday parties. That's the lore, I believe. That's the story that I've been given and that's what we're gonna talk about is this funny, corny, dumbass movie. Let's get into it. Starting off with the things that I like about this movie that I feel like most people praise about this corny film is that it has creative kills and lots of gore gags. And yes, it's very over the top. We get all kinds of ridiculous scenarios with like uh, stitches. It's basically cartoon violence, scooping out brains like ice cream, blowing people's heads up with a balloon uh, air pumper, heads blowing up, you get the funny one-liners. I like that Stitches has one-liners and the tone's very even throughout. It knows what it is, it doesn't try to be something else like Banana Splits where it's like, are we a comedy or are we a drama? I don't know, let's just be both. No, this one is a comedy throughout, but there is this little relationship, but it doesn't like weigh the film down, it doesn't get in the way, it's just kind of there for added noise just to try to add some character development, but that's not even necessary, but it's there. But for the most part, it's all even. It's a very even, funny as a horror comedy. Comedy, really, there's no horror to it, really. It's just bloody, that's it. And I like that each kill is creative. They're all different, they stand out. You could talk about them with your friends. They really would look great on like a best kills montage video. If you looked up like great kills of the last decade, you might see a couple from this movie. They're cartoony, but and they're just meant to make you laugh. They're not meant to like make you scared or anything. They're just gross, but not too gross. It's not like hostile or anything. It's just so over the top that it's not gross, and you just laugh and you have a good time. It's a nice popcorn movie to watch with friends. And I like that even like the eyeball dilates when she, uh, the woman gets her eye like taken out by the umbrella. And then there's just like little things that are added hilarity to the film. Just things that I didn't even, even notice until this viewing that were hilarious. We got Bulger, he's the fat guy who's I guess gay. They don't ever say it, but it's implied by the way he speaks that he might be gay. Looks like you've eaten too much fat, so let's see if we can find room in there for dessert. Oh Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he is. But he lives right next to the school and then like he gets picked up, he gets dropped off to, at school and he lives right next to it. It's funny, I didn't even notice it the first time I saw it. And then we get like this scene with the dick and balls being ripped off in one piece. It's like a dream sequence. The guy's dick and balls are being ripped off and tied to a balloon. He's like trying to catch it. Just hilarious. Another thing I noticed this viewing is that there's a couple making out at this party throughout the entire movie. Every time they come back to this main room towards the front of the ha of the house they're just on a bench make it out and they're never doing anything else another thing i didn't notice is that there's a little uh, nightmare on elm street reference uh, tom the main guy he's taking hypnosil for his nightmares about clowns and then i like that sti uh, snitches stitches yeah he's not a snitch he's a stitch stitches i don't know why they call him that but he's got a rubber nose and he like sniffs out people but then it's also a negative because then he doesn't use it to find the main character. Like he uses it to find Bulger, he uses it to find Paul, but he doesn't use it to find Tom and his girlfriend or soon to be girlfriend. I was like, why aren't you using it, buddy? So it's just one of those things that it's a funny idea, but then they don't use it and you're like, why aren't you using it? Kind of like Le Leprechaun when he teleports, you're like, why isn't he teleporting now? And it's so fucking convenient. It, it would help him out. I like that this is a zombie clown movie. It's very different. Usually you get clowns that are aliens like Pennywise or, they're, or killer clowns from outer space. Or you get clowns that are just straight up serial killers and they're not dead. This one's a zombie clown. And I like that they give you an interesting, dumb, funny lore that goes with the tone of the film. 
when you're a clown, apparently you join this black magic cult and you make an egg that's supposed to represent you. And when you die, they give you this special burial. But if you die like this clown did by not finishing a party, they do some black magic spell to where the next time you throw a party, he's going to come back and kill your ass and finish that party. That's what I took from it. I like that they foreshadow his death when his car, you see his car and it has a missing tail light or headlight and it's got like a bunch of duct tape over it. It's got like two slashes. And then later he gets his eye stabbed twice. And then I like that he has one liners. I said it like that. And I like that he dies in the end, basically how he died the first time with the kid doing like the thing with his shoelaces and then they push him over. Just a little, I thought that was kind of creative or it was kind of clever. Another thing I noticed this viewing is that Stitcher says, I hope you're 16. So the age of consent is 16 in Ireland. I heard it's 14 in Germany. This movie has a lot of hot chicks too in it. So that's a positive, but there's no nudity. That's a negative. Now the hottest chick in this movie goes to this girl. I, I forget her name. She's not memorable at all. I think her name's Rebecca. We'll call her Becky. And the clapper award for best scene in this film is the opening party where the Stitches meets his end with the kitchen knife. The over the top violence, the blood just gushing out of his head, landing on the kid. It very much reminded me of the remake of Child's Play, which is always a good thing. So, now let's move on to the things I did not care for. First up, there's cheap jump scares. Every time there's a jump scare, it's never because Stitch is, is around, it's because some dipshit's around and he's like, Buh! hey, where's your beer? Buh! Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. It's, I'm sick of those stupid scares in horror movies, all right? Carnal sin for horror movies. Quit doing it. Like, oh no, the nurse is behind you and she touched your shoulders. So then we gotta add this stupid like loud jump scare music to like make you jump back and it's fucking annoying. Quit doing it. Tom, this hapless chap, is so unlucky. He lives right next to the cemetery where the dead clown that he accidentally murdered is buried. So now he has to look at that cemetery every day and that's just convenient to the plot. So, and it doesn't even make sense. Like, why? It doesn't have to be there. We could just write it off as, you know, like, Stitches. He just walks all the way from a far away cemetery to the party. Now, the party, why does it have to be a big ass party? I think this movie could have been a little bit better if they just would have narrowed it down to the group of kids that Stitches is after. And that's another thing, Stitches is only after a specific group of kids. He's not after everybody at the party, just these like four people. So why we need all these extra bodies here makes no sense. Doesn't need to be there, it's just to be like, hey look, it's a big party, who cares? He didn't invite them, he did not. I think it could have been better if they just would have focused on the characters build them a little bit because they were all very one note and just caricatures and people who I didn't like and one of them Bulger I couldn't fucking stand or understand anything he said because not only is he like Irish or British but he's gay I think and he has like a lisp and a gay accent like he talks gay no offense but he just does so I couldn't understand a fucking word he was saying I should have put captions on but I didn't so anything he said I was like I have no clue what you're saying. So it was just annoying. But they should have just focused on the main group of kids and build up their characters a little bit. Maybe have all of them have like PTSD over what happened and then they never had a party again because of it. And then finally they they gain the like the nerves and the bravery to do it again. They're like, all right, we're gonna have a party again. Fuck our fears of that one night that shouldn't have ever happened, but whatever. Let's try to move on and let's throw another party again for old time's sake. And then boom, the clown comes back to life because blah, blah, blah. That's the curse. They threw a party now and now he has to go finish that party that he didn't get to before. Much better story right there. All this added noise and all these side people who never say shit, why they're there. Like, it just wastes time, like, all these party montage shots. Like, oh, we're partying, drinking. It's like, I don't care. And then this one guy hooks up with this chick, and we don't get any nudity. It's a sex scene, but we don't get to see her tits, and we don't see shit. Goes nowhere, and then his friend Tom cock blocks him. Fuck you, Tom. We were about to see some boobies. Now, Tom, he's the only one that has, like, PTSD over what happened. He's very frightened by clowns, and he's always scared that one day that clown's gonna come back, and he does. But he, they stress it so much in the first like 30, 35 minutes of the movie. It's like every three minutes, 
there's some other like little gag or some other like scare to be like, oh my gosh, he's a he's hallucinating a clown. He sees a clown in the distance. He's seeing another clown. And it's like I get it. He's scared of clowns. All you need is one example to illustrate that, not six. I also don't appreciate the fact that Stitch just kills a cat, so he can kill a cat that had nothing to do with his death, but he can't kill the scores of people at this party to up the body count. He can't kill them. Why are they untouchable? But the cat is? You can kill him? I mean, it's just a joke. It's just here for comedy. He's like beating it over and over again. He's like, how many lives you got left, bitch? Nine, eight, seven. But yeah, I just didn't care for the characters at all. If they were better written or just more funny, then this could have been better. But instead, we kind of got this typical cliche, like, dorky, shy, introverted kid who's loved this girl next door for so long and he's never admitted it. And then finally he gets the girl at the end because she's like, I should be with you, not my dick boyfriend who would rather drink piss than talk to me. He literally does drink piss and doesn't know the difference between piss and beer. Although, yeah, it is kind of hard to tell. Beer is disgusting. Where do you think you're going? So yeah, the characters suck, but overall, this is a fun movie to watch with friends, fun to watch every Halloween. It's got great gore and practical effects, some good comedy. I laughed a few times during this. It's a decent, fun carnival ride, so I'll say when it comes to Stitches, maybe just check this one out at Redbox. The Mr. Hatter War goes to Paul, who gets gutted and then... Stitches does a little balloon trick with his, with his intestines and then he gets his head busted wide open by pumping it with air. In the Mr. Twig Award for worst kill would go to the bitch who deserved a lot more. She did not deserve a quick death, she deserved a slow death, but instead she gets an umbrella through the eye and then we get slow motion blood squirting out. And I like that her eye dilates, so at least you got that. That's another thing I noticed about this movie is that all the death scenes have slow motion at some point in them. But those are my thoughts on Stitches. What did you think about this killer clown movie? Is it your favorite killer clown movie? Let me know in the comments below what your favorite clown movie is. And as always, thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you like what you see here, you can hit this like button to show me your support. And you can become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, auf Wiedersehen.